The first quarter of 2018 has already come and gone, but we're just getting started with this year's best flagship smartphones. Samsung was first out of the gate with the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, and even though there are dozens of other flagship devices scheduled to come out between now and the fall, this phone here is likely better than anything else that you'll be able to buy this year. I'm Nick Gray, the High Tech Traveler, and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. So we all know that people buy high-end smartphones for a lot of different reasons, but I think we can all agree that performance, design, camera, and battery life are usually the top factors that people consider. And if you simply look at this phone's spec list, it pretty much checks all the right boxes. Naturally, the first thing you're going to notice when you look at this phone is its impeccable design. But if you're all familiar with last year's models, you'll probably notice that the S9 and the S9 Plus really haven't changed that much. The phone's meticulously crafted glass and metal body features all have the same curves as last year. But there is one distinguishable change, and that's the placement of the fingerprint sensor. It's been moved below the camera lens exactly where it belongs. Samsung's been pushing its curved AMOLED display technology for a few years now, and it's gotten really good, but I'm still not a fan. The curved edges are stunning, don't get me wrong, but they're simply not practical. They add unnecessarily glare that you wouldn't get with a flat display, and I can't tell you how many accidental screen taps I have on a daily basis from the edges of my thumb grazing the screen. The 6.2 inch display panel itself though is absolutely stunning, capable of displaying HDR content with bright and vivid colors, and it's even bright enough to be used in direct sunlight. But I honestly think we'd have a much better experience if the panel itself and the glass on top of it wasn't curved. As with design, things seem to have stalled on the software front as well. Surprisingly, the launcher is practically identical to what we got last year. The layout is clean and quite usable, with quite a few customization options if you want to make it your own. It looks modern and the interactions are really smooth. Well, except for Bixby Home. Like the Google Now screen that you get on Pixel devices, Bixby Home is located to the left of the main home screen. It offers quite a bit of useful information like news, Facebook updates, and easy access to calling an Uber, weather, and much more. But it always takes an eternity to load. Okay, maybe a second or two isn't an eternity, but it sure feels like it when Google Now or similar features like HTC's Blink Feed seem to load instantaneously. As for Bixby itself, things have gotten a little bit better. If you're not familiar with Bixby, it's essentially a device-specific assistant which shares limited crossover with what Google Assistant can do. You can ask it to write a tweet for you, change your display's brightness, or start your favorite music playlist. If you're into it, the dedicated Bixby key on the left side of the phone can be extremely convenient. Personally, I still prefer the Google Assistant over Bixby, but it's definitely nice to have options. When it comes to performance, the Galaxy S9 Plus hits all the right notes. Like its littler sibling, the S9 Plus is powered by a Snapdragon 845 chip, which is blazing fast. If you're a gamer, you're in for a treat. The phone can handle anything that you throw at it, but it can get warm from time to time if you're playing graphic intensive games like PUBG Mobile for an extended period, but it's not unbearable. Also, since the phone does come with 6GB of RAM, it easily outclasses the smaller S9 when it comes to multitasking. If you're constantly jumping in and out of apps, you'll love the speed and fluidity since the phone can easily hold 10 apps in memory before the system starts dumping them to free up additional RAM. In addition to its larger display and added RAM, the S9 Plus also has another feature which sets it apart from the base S9, a dual 12 megapixel main camera. The main sensor is paired with a 25mm lens with an adjustable aperture. Yeah, that's right, smartphones now have adjustable apertures. It can only be changed between f1.5 and f2.4, but that's a whole lot more than any other smartphone can do. The second sensor has an f2.4 52mm lens, allowing it to take live focus photos which artificially blur out the background. The dual sensor setup may sound exciting if you've never used a smartphone with one before, but I can tell you that there's really nothing to be excited about. The results that you get while capturing live focus photos are on par with what you get on pretty much any other smartphone with a similar setup. It works most of the time, but you'll also get quite a few disappointing shots as well. The camera app has a new AR emoji feature, which is an iteration on the stickers that were introduced last year. You can create a digital representation of yourself which you can use to snap a picture or even record a video, but the results leave a lot to be desired. Like Apple's Animoji, you'll likely play around with it for a few days and then never touch it again. The real highlight though is the main sensor, which uses multiple exposures to create a single image with higher dynamic range, more accurate white balance, and less noise. 
It's fair to say that the cameras on the S9 and the S9 Plus are on par with the Pixel 2 and perform even better in some instances. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you're taking pictures during the day, at night, or in the shadows. The camera on this phone will find a way to deliver a good looking picture. It's hard to say how the variable aperture lens affects the final results, but I doubt things would look much different if Samsung would have just gone with a fixed f1.5 lens. From my perspective, it's more of a marketing gimmick than anything else. The 4K video capture is great as well, and the optical image stabilization does an incredible job at removing any of the jitters that you get while recording. You guys are slow. Nana. But the feature that I enjoy the most is the 960 frames per second super slow motion capture. It takes a while to learn how to use it properly, but with a little bit of patience, you can get some truly amazing clips. The 8 megapixel camera you get up front is one of the best on the market for capturing selfies and recording front facing video. The images themselves are really crisp and even turn out great when lighting isn't perfect. It would be nice if there was a little bit more dynamic range, but at this point I'm just getting nitpicky. And finally, let's talk about battery life. A 3,500 milliamp hour cell inside a phone with a 6.2 inch display and a top of the line processor isn't exactly a recipe for success. But somehow, the S9 Plus manages to pull through, delivering a full day's worth of use on a single charge. With heavy use and about five hours of screen on time, you should be able to get through a full day with 15 to 20% battery charge remaining. Not bad, but definitely not great either. All things considered, the Galaxy S9 Plus is a very impressive phone, and this year the extra camera on the back and the 2GB of additional RAM are a good reason to consider the larger S9 Plus over the regular S9. The fact that it looks identical to last year's model probably means that you should stay away if you already own an S8, but it's definitely worth the cash if you're rocking an older device and want a stylish and capable smartphone. Of course, you will need to come up with about $900 in order to do so. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got more Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus coverage coming up within the next couple weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.